Hey, welcome back everyone. Live coverage here, day two, VMware Explorer 2023. I'm John with Rob Stretche, my co-host and leading the analysis of the research team for theCUBE called The Collective. And you know, the story here is multi-cloud, generative AI, certainly a gift that, that just landed on the market. Everyone's excited, it's accelerating the cloud and on-premise and multi-cloud we call super cloud. We have two great guests here, with Chris Prasad, SVP and general manager, the cloud infrastructure business unit. You're driving a lot of the cloud change. We got Prashant Shinoi, vice president of product and technical marketing. You guys are putting the pieces together. Welcome to theCUBE, great to see you guys. Yeah, thank you. Hey, great, to great to see you, John. We love theCUBE because we get to have the conversations and broadcast it live. We're sharing the data. You guys are really a big part of the VMware arsenal that's going to put out the cloud major pillar for the business and going forward. So, you know, first, this is kind of a historic closing, this VMware Explorer. We're closing this chapter of uh, VMware's, you know, iconic rise uh, as uh, the Mount Rushmore of technology startups in Silicon Valley. What yeah. you've done with virtualization and, and, the, and the record, we, you know, I witnessed in my career. It really is spectacular. The company really has been amazing. As the next chapter comes, you got Broadcom making the acquisition probably the next 30 days or so. There's going to be an emphasis on execution, like you guys always are, but it's going to be renewed focus. Yes. Multi-cloud is resonating. We've been calling it super cloud. And again, AI has hit the table, yeah. which is another workload that everyone's focused on, which gives more visibility into the importance yeah. of cloud and multiple clouds. I look at it as a beginning of a brand new chapter in our evolution, right? And, and the key, kind of the killer application now that is driving it is the Gen AI stuff. So, uh, you know, the multi-cloud, all the work that we have done on the infrastructure layer with NVIDIA to provide accelerated computing, all of that is coming together to support the, the new generation of applications that are powered by Gen AI. So, I think as we are ending one chapter, we are actually starting the next big chapter in the application world. Chris, talk about the impact of NVIDIA. I saw Jensen on stage here, it was really, he, yeah. it was actually, he does his normal stick, he's really yeah. great on stage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Is it I, I might buy one, actually <laughs> yeah. looks good, I'll go like, yeah. I'm a Jensen clone. Did you have one jacket or multiple jackets? <laughs> yeah. yeah. exactly. But it was a moment where he also tipped his hat in a way, and, and if, if, yeah. you know, if you know Ragu and Jensen, you know it was a moment of like, hey, hat tip, great job. That's why I highlighted the Mount Rushmore of tech companies. But really, he said, Ragu said, um, AI is with a runtime of multi-cloud. Now that got that got my attention. Runtime is a word that's used in in operating systems. Okay. Yeah. I've heard Amanda Bliss say we're we're the best scheduler. Scheduler is another term. I mean, we're talking about an operating system here. And so, like you see, Nvidia. How important are they in the cloud play for you? Can you explain their role? Yeah. I mean, if you think about Gen AI, right? Rigu made this point. You want to take the Gen AI infrastructure to where the data is, right? And so it could be on-prem. So when we say private AI, we don't mean private cloud. I think it's a very important distinction to make, yeah. right? What we mean is privacy of the data, choice of models, right? So customers can own their model and their data and their Gen AI apps. And so that's what private means. But you can run it on-prem or in any of the clouds. And we are set up with our infrastructure running on AWS, Google, Azure, all the public clouds, and on-prem. And so that's what Raghu was talking about. You put the, the NVIDIA-enabled private AI foundation stack right. in any of these locations and take it to where the data is. Yeah, and I, I, I would, well, sorry, go ahead. You know, I said, you've had a tremendously strong partnership with NVIDIA, right? Even before Gen AI, right? Like, I call them ushering the world of like heterogeneous computing, right? Like the CPUs, the DPUs, yeah. and now the GPUs. And Gen AI is that killer app on the GPU right now from an enterprise perspective, right? In right. the commercial space, you've seen ChatGPT, OpenAI, but in the enterprise space, I think the partnership of NVIDIA, which is really good at having these kind of infrastructure with us, who can abstract the infrastructure and run this heterogeneous yeah. computing. But just as a, just as a side point before we get to the question, Dave Vellante wrote a post three years ago called how NVIDIA is going to take over the data center. Uh, yeah. It's on our site, you can read it. At that point, the reference was that they're going down the road, not beyond GPUs. And, and at Jensen's SIGGRAPH keynote, he <laughs> basically showed a rack of servers. And those weren't GPUs, those were, that's a rack. Yeah. That's servers. So they are, that's a data center thing, a lot of IOs involved. Yeah. So, you know, that, that relationship's super important, so I, I just want to make yeah. a point No, there. no, but I think, I think 
what you guys are getting at is very super important. I think one of the things that VMware has always been strong at is the ecosystem play around this. Yeah. And in fact, we have some ecos a lot of ecosystem partners on throughout the rest of the day today and highlighting a lot of that. One of the things that I, I want to understand was part of the driving, because you provide that infrastructure, that common infrastructure, it's not just yeah. the big three, right? It's right. not just GCBE and no. a AVS and VMC on AWS. It's also, you have you know, thousands of cloud service providers around the world. This would look like an opportunity for them to also get in and play in that Gen AI, especially from a you know, sovereign cloud kind of yes. effect. Yes, so it's, uh, when we talk about the cloud, right, we include all the thousands of partners who deliver VCF-based yep. infrastructure, and VCF has been enabled with the yep. AI acceleration. So it's everywhere. Now you can tie it with the hugging face and all the models around it to run Gen AI, right? Yep. That's the announcement. Rob and I were yeah. talking before you guys came on. I want to get. We want. I wanted to ask this question because we're getting down that road. I'm glad you're here, Prashant, too. What is the business plan for you guys going forward? Because the market is interesting right now. You're in a good position. Mm -hmm. Everything's clicking. I like how you brought Ari and Tanzu together. I think that's a good move. Farina was on yesterday, nailed that. I thought that's going to be very compelling, very understated, but that's going to, I think, flower into something great. That's going to set up the developer market, I think, to really be operational. Yeah. You know, you land those apps somewhere. If you can string these clouds together with the distributed computing architecture, yeah. that is VMware, you can hit it. Yeah, I think yeah. the target's clear. It's not only aspirational, it's gettable. What is the products that you guys are, are selling? What's the focus? What's the business plan for your, your group? Yeah, so I'll, I'll start with, first of all, the way we run in these clouds is different from you know, setting up an abstraction on top of their software, right? We are running on metal from AWS, metal from AVS, with our stack running right on top of the metal. So essentially you have on-prem, same stack, metal in a a AWS, metal in AVS, metal in o Google, running essentially the VMware Cloud Foundation. So we have one common substrate that ties it all together, right? With uh, vCenter, I saw SiliconANGLE talk about vCenter being a control point in the multi-cloud, yeah. right? That, yeah. that is indeed true. I mean, I, yeah. one of our architects was jumping up and down saying, yeah, they got it. <laughs> <laughs> we get it a lot, yeah. we get that a lot. We do get it, thanks for pointing that out. Right, and, and so, yeah, so that's, <laughs> that's a common substrate that we are building with a common control plane yeah. across all of this. And then we have a set of uh, hybrid cloud services for operations, for developer consumption, that run on top of this in a consistent way across all the endpoints at the same time. So you have a unified experience mm -hmm. for customers to then access all these clouds. So that, and then Tansu comes in, says, hey, developers, we are going to give you some abstractions so you can operate across all these clouds and it talks to all these endpoints in a consistent way. So that's the, I get the market super multi-cloud, super cloud, businesses, yeah. abstraction. Yeah. What's the business model? What's the product? How you guys, is it ecosystem driven? Take us through some of the yeah. The, the execution pieces. Yeah, <clears throat> you want to start? Uh, yeah, I can ahead. start off by, so VMware Cloud is what uh, Krish was defining, right? Yeah. So it's absolutely a channel-driven, uh, partner-driven, and VMware-driven uh, solution, right? You, we've always known to be yeah. providing that choice, an open ecosystem, but with a consistent platform for infrastructure operations and applications. So yeah. that continues to be there, and it's going to be crucial for the multi-cloud world. But VCF is our software-defined platform, right? vSphere, vSAN, NSX, the ARIA automation and operations aspect that John, you were talking about, is what form, uh, forms the VCF foundation. And we've done a lot of innovation. I think that's one of the surprises that our customers had, <laughs> uh, starting off with John, like, hey, it's a new chapter. Yeah. Are you going to keep innovating? And sure. when I talk to customers in this event, they're like, wow, it's like, that's yeah. a ton of innovation that yeah. you've done right in our core infrastructure, yeah. right? So we haven't stopped doing that. But now with Gen AI, we brought yeah. that same foundational innovation and helped usher the next set of killer use cases on LLM models, right? So that part I think is going to be very, very critical for us. And our business model is going to be, hey, buy software as a service, yep. right, and subscription, uh, which is, think of it as the VCF subscription, and you can take it to any of these yep. endpoints, 
right? It's fully portable. You can take it to any partner. And then, so customers have the flexibility. They decide where they want to run their infrastructure. Yeah. They just do one transaction and buy the software as a subscription, and voila. You so go. I, I yeah. wanted to get it out there on the record, because I, because I, Rob and I have a reason for this. We are going to be talking a lot about this, because this is the core jewels yep. of VMware. Yes. You're running the yes. core yes. jewels, vSphere, vSAN. Yep. This is going to be the center of all the action. Yes. And this is with the focused execution that's coming in this yep. next chapter, yep. will probably be the engine yep. that will float no drive doubt. the other boats. No doubt, no yeah. doubt. And so yeah. take us through the mindset there. Yeah, I think, look, um, in the next chapter, there will be a lot of focus, right? The Hawk has been very clear about, hey, focus is very important. Um, you know, vSphere, VCF, multi-cloud, that's going to be the center of the center of gravity for the, the company going forward. And certainly, Tansu kind of coming and helping with the applications landing on that yeah. platform. And there's going to be a level of simplification also, right? Like, Focus requires <laughs> focusing on a few things and doing it extremely well. And I think uh, as, as part of our pace of innovation, sometimes we've made things from a consumption standpoint and adoption standpoint a bit more complex okay. for our customers. Well, so. well, I think the abstraction layer is going to help. This, yeah. this running yeah. a super cloud will be certainly, that's the, that's the multi-cloud implementation. You get that done easily, then you can put all that complexity underneath it. Yeah. I want to get to Hawk stay because he doesn't talk yeah. publicly about it. I saw his note here, but I've, heard things and I've you know, sourced this out, but here's a statement that I heard. It might not be exact, I'll read it yeah. uh, to the, for everyone, yeah. and then I want to get your reaction to yeah. where you guys are on the progress. Something to the extent of, he made the statement in these private meetings and VMware and everything else, I mean, he said something, something like this. We want to make it so you can buy infrastructure from VMware, run it on partners' clouds tomorrow, and then hyperscale clouds after that, mm -hmm. ultimately, Mm. Buy infrastructure, right? Simple yeah. statement. Yeah. Where are you guys on that journey right now? I mean, that that's no different than what we are doing now, right? We we offer the VMware cloud on all the hyperscalers, right? All the public, and then, like you said, thousands of other partners are delivering similar services, right? So what Hawk is talking about is build an ecosystem, you know, really accelerate that business. So it's not about defining a new product, you know, taking customers somewhere yeah. else. It's yeah. about, hey, bring in a lot more of the ecosystem, the GSIs, all of that, to really push this and help customers deploy and be successful with it. That's what he's talking about. And I, I think it's bringing more of that to all of those ecosystems, right? Because yeah. I think even with uh, V1 of uh, vSAN Max right yeah. now, it doesn't run on the hyperscalers at this point. So Correct. You, you, yeah. you're... I and mean, those are all roadmap items, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 They, uh, that's the focus, though, yeah. but that's yeah, the that focus. Is, yeah. well, he said yesterday in his little keynote, like, oh yeah, for ecosystem, a billion dollars going to the ecosystem. Mm -hmm. yeah. I heard some rumblings last night, some of the dinner, hallway conversation after dinner, they, everyone wants a piece of that action. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, it's, yeah. it's the scaling the go-to-market <laughs> model, right? Yeah. Like, I mean, when we provide a very open ecosystem, the route to market also needs to be pretty broad and wide, right? Because right. our direct sales force is only yeah. going to talk to this many customers <laughs> to be able to have VMware Cloud. So having the broad ecosystem, whether it's our hyperscalers, whether it's our cloud service providers, whether it's our GSIs, whether it's our direct sales, is going to really help. What are, they, what, are they that. what are they buying? What's the ecosystem? engaging with? Are they engaging with the product, um, design implementations? I saw some reference architectures out there on some yeah. AI. What's the engagement with the ecosystem? What's the plan to get them uh, enthusiastic and confident that they're going to yeah. be, be I mean, set their business on this? I mean, the name of the game is customer deployments and consumption, right? So that's where it starts. So, uh, you know, all the GSIs, being able to have the, the reference architectures, get customers deployed, help them be successful, help them be consuming the cloud, right? That's, when you're in a subscription world, it's all about consumption, yeah. right? It's right. about, it's not the perpetual world where you can just sell software and then <laughs> it sits on the shelf, right? So that, that's, that's what he's talking about. You have the, the GSIs enabled so that we can not only sell at scale, but really help with the deployments and the consumption of uh, yeah, yeah. the infrastructure. And I, I think part of it, we had one of your partners on yesterday talking about the certifications process yeah. and how, how do you keep them, because again, VM, the being a VCP and a v, VCDX and all of those different 
acronyms in between <laughs> has had so much VMware cloud. I know. Cloud yes, say. it's had it's you know, but it, it's had so much clout for so yeah. long. Yeah. Now you see everybody on LinkedIn. Okay, I'm an Amazon, you know, yeah. certified architect. And how do you keep people in the ecosystem and others outside at those interested in this stuff and keep them where they want to be the cloud architect? They they're looking at that. How do you bridge that gap for them as yeah. well with the products and? Yeah, I mean, look, uh, if you think about it, the combination of on-prem and all these multi-cloud endpoints is really a vast you know, set yeah. of uh, <laughs> cloud infrastructure that customers are deploying applications on. It will rival any, any big cloud, right? If you combine all the on-prem data centers plus all these cloud endpoints that we have. So I think Really, it is what we have not done a real good job of is investing in these partners, mm -hmm. helping them with the training, really ha having the force multiplier to really, so it's not about people not wanting it in their resume, yeah. it's really about, we have been, you know, maybe a little bit diffused in our focus, and so I, I think what Hawk is talking about is really go after it, really focus, enable them, train them, really get the scale that we are yeah. looking for. Yeah, and there's demand. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. you see it right behind us, yeah. right? There's a certification yeah. and uh, yeah. training program I mean, here. My has... calendar is filled with partner after partner. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's interesting, yeah. Rob and I were, Rob brought up a good point. He, he actually observed and brought it to our attention that cloud architects yeah. is becoming the new elite position. Yes. And yeah. V experts, V SAN, uh, VMUG uh, users, you know, the old yeah. old school virtualization guys operating VMware yeah. Yeah. Look, are looking at the next generation from a career standpoint saying, Wait, am I going to be relevant? Because there's yeah. a relevance factor of psychology and yes. position power. Oh, yeah. Yes. And so like, I don't want to just be an admin. We don't think cloud admin will be a job. I think that's yeah. going to be automated. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Operations, exactly. they know how to operate things. That can also be automated with humans, but the architect is the key role now. Yeah. yeah. Because you have to look at the cross cloud, super cloud operating model. That's a system thinking. I mean, remember agile, yeah. design thinking. I think we're entering an era of systems thinking. Yeah. And that's different than what we've seen before. What's your reaction a, to that? It's a, as you were saying, it's not just a cloud architect, it's a super cloud architect to use your word, right? It's, yeah. it's, it's not easy. And, and we talk here a lot about technology, but I think one of the biggest uh, obstacles or a challenge that our customers see is the skill set, right? Yeah. Like there are very, very few folks in the world here who are like an Azure, Amazon, Google, yeah. IBM, yeah. VMware <laughs> expert to stitch yeah. all these together and create this, yeah. we were talking before the show, the OSI layer, right? Like yeah. what is the OSI layer for this multi-cloud? It's not easy to do. So I think a lot of focus on us is to truly create that single multi-cloud yeah. platform, help certified, trained folks, create that well-architected framework mm -hmm. that customers can deploy and then drive their adoption and consumption, right? It's going to take yeah. us a while, right? The, the, well, the, and, the, the, you got a tailwind with the platform engineering evolution. Yeah, that's the rise of platform engineering. No, I was going to say, I mean, it, it, it's the people who understand how to target the right infrastructure for the right application. So you have to have application knowledge, you have to translate that into what, what do you need in the infrastructure, and, yeah. and it could be the architect roles, but they have to span both yeah. sides and be credible in the past the infrastructure guys were like, you know, in their silo, yeah. that's the application. Yeah. Now, you, now you have to bridge that, you have to speak the language, yeah. you have to talk Kubernetes, you have to talk Gen AI, yeah. you yeah. have to, you know, and then provide the infrastructure that maps to the needs of the application, yeah. right? And, and right. if you do that, you're enabling devs. Yes. And then yeah. everyone's shifting left or doing whatever yeah, in their, exactly. their CICD exactly. pipelining. Exactly. And that's the new infrastructure. And yeah. I'm really glad they changed the term. Rob, you brought this up at yeah. KubeCon last in Amsterdam. They changed it from, um, the Google term SRE yeah. to yeah. Yeah. platform engineer. They kind of, I mean, they kind of broadened the definition. But remember SRE? Yeah, yeah. yeah. SRE. Yeah. Yeah. It brought in a whole, it brought in a lot more infrastructure because there was infrastructure, infra ops, and other things that have come yeah. in. DevOps. DevOps. Yeah. I think platform engineering, to your point, yeah. is way broader than just hey, it's the infrastructure, it's the security, it's the you know yeah. dev tooling yeah. and things exactly. of that nature. And I think that's where to you know, some of the messaging here. This I mean, we have a been. platform yeah. engineering team in VMware. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 That provides a platform for the internal SaaS services and whatnot. You can see we're pretty excited by this. Yeah. Um, yeah. Rob, yeah. Rob and I have been doing a lot of work on this. You're going to see a lot more content coming out. Yeah. We think that this is a seminal moment in the industry as this new infrastructure layer 
is the new OSI model for this next yeah. generation. Yeah. The folks watching OSI change the game on proprietary network operating systems. I think as more environments come in, the need for some standards, de facto or driven by developers and driven by platform engineers, yeah. that's yeah. where the next focus will come from. Developers already won. Yep. Yeah. They're driving standards. They decide which is best based on what works the best. Yep. If best yep. apps are the right exactly. place. I think the, I think platform engineering is going to drive. The platform engineering is going to drive and dictate what the standards going to be. And I think that if you have your ears on listening, we're going to hear that. So that's our our focus. Yeah. No. Absolutely. I mean, we did a quick survey, hands survey in one of the meetings, and there was around 30 to 35 percent who had platform engineering. So it's an evolution. Yeah. It's getting yeah. there, DevOps but it's starting. And, yeah. and by the way, we were saying on theCUBE yesterday, you can watch some of the sessions of clips, data is going down the same road as security. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Data supply chain, yeah. data quality, legal yeah. issues, yeah. Exactly. guardrails. These are the words we're hearing in conversations. Yeah. That's exactly like security. Yeah, yeah. more developers, so with uh, Gen AI. Because, data developers. Because the, yeah. once you train a model, your data has <laughs> gone into the model, and that, right? Well, so. congratulations on all your success, and all that hard work is, is uh, going to pay off as this chapter of VMware closes. Final word, put a plug in for the group. What are you guys excited about? What's on your mind? Look, I, I think um, on two fronts, I think there is a, with the Gen AI, there is our infrastructure, all the work that we have done in the recent years with NVIDIA and so on, you now have the application that is really going to take advantage of it. That's very exciting yeah. for us and our customers. And then we are all looking forward yeah. to the acquisition closing in the yeah. next yeah. big chapter yeah. going forward. Continue to be yeah. the de facto platform for the super cloud, right? Yeah. The infrastructure <laughs> platform. So that's going to be exciting for us. Well, it sounds like you're going to be keynoting our next SuperCloud 4 yeah. event, Chris. <laughs> Sean. Hey, thanks so much. You know, I always say there's always an inflection point when the hockey stick kicks up. Yeah. Yeah. And I think we're at a moment now yeah. where it feels like we're getting close. You don't know where you are on that curve, but it yeah. feels like we're close. Yeah, we yeah, are yeah, very close. All right. yeah. Guys, thanks. We're a little bit over, but very important yeah. conversation. Thank the you. For VMware and all the new products and business units are going to be pumping on all cylinders. Soon, we're going to go to close the next chapter, close this chapter and open the next chapter. This is theCUBE. Bring it all to you here. I'm John Furrier, Rob Stretchy, Dave Vellante, Lisa Martin on the other set. We'll be right back after this short break.